If you have a look under your render properties tab, you'll see a section for light paths, specifically max bounces. Now, what is that and how does that actually affect your renders? In this scene, we have a ball right here, which is given just an emissive material. And it's inside of a room with a partition dividing it from this section over here. So if we take a look at the rendered view right now, I have the total max bounces set to zero. So what that means is all of the light that is being cast from this ball is hitting whatever surface it comes into contact with and stopping there. It's not bouncing around and say going over here, bouncing, hitting the floor or anything like that. It's just hitting a surface and stopping. As a result, the second partition over here, this little room is completely black because no, no light can directly go from here into this section. And since it's not bouncing, it's not able to say hit the floor and bounce back this way either. So we can increase the total bounces and suddenly you can start see getting a little bit of detail in here. And this is just with one total bounce. So that means light may be going over here and then hitting this wall over here and then it's stopping. It's not bouncing and hitting that wall. Maybe it's coming over here. It's hitting this wall over here, then bouncing off into that wall. If we increase it further, we get progressively more light. It's hard to tell with all of the noise that naturally comes with a cycles render, but it, it does get a little bit more if we can. Let's actually, right now, let's take this right here. We go into the camera view. You can see we take it all the way down to zero bounces. Here we are again, it looks black. Increase it to one bounce. You get a little bit of light there. So let's actually take that and do a real quick render. All right, so I finished rendering a few different versions of this. This is the one we just did uh, with one max bounce allowed. And then if we bump it up to two max bounces, you can see it gets a little bit brighter over here. And actually this, this side of it also gets brighter. And then we bump it up to five more bright as well. It's starting to get a little bit noisy. Uh, but as you can see, it does allow for increased brightness because what happens in the real world, you're not gonna have a limited number of bounces like this. You're not gonna get just five bounces. What's gonna happen in the real world is it's gonna bounce and then it's essentially just gonna keep going in whatever direction the light takes it until it eventually reflects so much that it loses all energy and does turn into black. But computers cannot do an infinite number of calculations. So as Blender artists, we have to choose what level of realism we're willing to go for because going from uh, one, one max bounce, you see it has a render time of eight seconds each time you increase it, you increase from one to two, it more than double, it pretty much doubles. Go from two to five, it increases a little bit more. At that point, we're getting more into the noise threshold side of limiting factors here. But point being, the more you increase the number of bounces, the longer your renders are gonna take, but the more realistic it is. And that, like always, it's always a trade-off between true photorealism and uh, good, good rendering times. So that leaves us with whatever these other sections are. We have diffuse, glossy, transmission, and volume. All right, so these next five sections are essentially limits on specific types of light bounces. And this could be very useful depending on the type of scene you have. If you have a scene with a lot of glossy surfaces and their reflective surfaces, you may be able to play a little bit with that value and get a better rendering performance and not sacrifice a whole lot on photorealism. Same goes for diffuse transmission volume and transparent. Most of the time you can leave these settings as is, but let's just take a look at how they actually affect what you're doing. So here we have the exact same scenario, but the room is just a diffuse BSDF. I switched it from the principal BSDF to just diffuse. So let's take a look at how that affects what we're doing. So if we take it down to zero total bounces, we end up with the same situation. It's all well lit on one side and completely black on the other. We take it up to one, it's the same result as we had before. You know, this, this right here, it's the same. But then if we actually start increasing the total bounces right now, since our diffuse is set to one, 
what you're going to notice is that no matter how many times we increase this, no matter what value it is, it's going to look exactly the same. And that's because the only type of bounces that are happening in this particular scene right now are diffuse bounces, since our little room is made out of a diffuse BSDF. So the only way to actually get more bounces is by increasing it on the diffuse specifically. So in other words, between these two in this particular scenario, it's going to be whichever one of these is lowest is going to be the limiting factor. Cause after all, if we increase this back to its default value of four and take it down to zero, it's still going to follow the same behavior as we had before. So it's going to be whichever one of these is lowest is going to give you your limiting factor and determine what gives you the most realism. So then we can take a look at the glossy. We switch this over here to a glossy BSDF. First of all, that's really rough. So let's change that and just make it a little bit, you know, rougher like that a little bit. You can still see how it behaves as a glossy surface when we have it like that. Let's take it all the way down to zero. What do we got? Total, total bounces are zero. So whatever you see, it's going to go from this ball right here. It's going to hit the surface and bounce off directly into the camera. A glossy surface is a lot more reflective. If we increase the total from zero to one, we're starting to get some of that behavior where it's lighting up this section of the, of the room. We're getting a little bit of lighting in there. We increase to two and so on and so forth, we get there. And we can go backwards, going uh, limiting from the glossy side specifically. And we're getting that initial same behavior there as we did before. All right, so here we are back uh, looking at volume. What have we got here? We've still got that same initial room set up with the ball inside the little room. This time though, we've got this big cube surrounding the entire room. And right now it's set with a volume, principled volume uh, shader. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at it from here. Right now you can see the outline of our cube and the ball inside there is shining light out into the cube. If we take a look at the volume shader or the volume bounces specifically, it's set to zero. So what does that mean? Uh, basically the light is going in there and however far it gets, that's the power of it. And that's essentially, that's what you're seeing. If we increase that by one click, you can see it starts spreading a little bit more. It's a little bit more diffuse. You're getting some more complex interactions with the scene. Go down from there. And then as you do that each time, you can see you're start, starting to get a little bit more specs everywhere within the volume. Honestly, leave it at zero unless you're running you know, ultra realistic because that increases your render times a lot and it for very minimal advantage. Uh, in fact, I will render a couple of shots with different um, max bounces and we'll take a look at that in a, just a second. All right, so I've rendered out a few different versions of this with different settings on the volume bounces. So here's with the default of zero bounces, you know, you can get that uh, volumetric look here going pretty good. If you increase from zero to one, you actually, you know, it does spread it out a little bit more, but you actually go from a render time of 111 to 141 which is not great. If you increase from one to three, you get a little bit more of that on there. Not as dramatic an increase as from zero to one. Uh, render time does go up by about 14 seconds though. So again, I would personally recommend just leaving this at the default, unless you did need a specific uh, look you were going for. Like in this case, you know, we can see the if you have uh, just zero, you can't really see this second compartment in there. If you increase it to just one, you can start to see a little bit of detail going on inside there. And if that's important to you, then by all means increase that. Uh, otherwise, just leave it as is. 
All right, so if we want to take a look at the transparent light bounces, let's take a look at this scene right here. We have three planes and one light. And these two planes right here are both given this transparent shader, whereas this other plane right here is just given a regular BSDF shader. Right now, the light paths are set to too transparent. So the light, it still gets through. If we increase it further, it doesn't matter what we increase it to, this plane over here is still illuminated by the light over here when it's going through uh, both of these right here it goes through there through that one and then eventually onto that plane and as long as this number is sufficiently high it doesn't matter what it is the plane will be illuminated if we go all the way down though you can see that actually with zero transparent bounces it is not illuminated at all. So what does that mean for us? Well, it essentially means that the light is going and hitting this one and stopping, and that is the end of that story. If we increase it to one, we get some weird funkiness that I don't really understand why it, why it looks like that. Uh, we can, you know, move that away if we move the one plane away so that the light essentially is just passing straight uh, into the one plane, then no issues there. It's only whenever we start having a little bit of interaction between everything. Even then, it, it's, it's, not, it's not there. I don't know. Anyways, uh, the thing, though, is it goes both ways. The... Uh, transparent max bounces and what do I mean by that essentially the light with one you know we can give it two transparent bounces uh, so the light is able to go through here through that one and hit that and then it can come back towards us so we can see the plane but if you'll notice if we have a single light bounce what it cannot do is pass back through here through the plane and to us. So the plane essentially acts as a holdout. Uh, it cuts off the light and you can't see behind it. If you increase it a little bit more, then what you've got here is you can see through a single transparent plane. You can see through it, um, but what you cannot see is when it has to pass through two planes. So if we switch back over to solid view mode, this cross section right here the light has to pass through both planes back to the camera in order for us to see. But since we only have two light uh, bounces available for transparency, it continues to act as a holdout. But if we increase it yet once more, we suddenly can see again. However, yet again, if we increase this, if we have instead three planes that it has to go through. If I can, if we have three planes that it has to go through. Then, yet again, we cannot see behind that since we are only at three. So yeah, that's just kind of a, a basic introduction into light paths. Just figure out what works for you and what settings you have. Most of the time, the default values are fine. Uh, they give you reasonably good performance and pretty good realism. I wouldn't change them unless you're doing like an animation or something that requires you to have or squeeze as many seconds out of your renders as you can. Uh, otherwise, leave it all the same and I'll see you on the next video.